Hello and welcome to the business of blockchain. I'm Nisa Amoyles at the New York Stock Exchange. Joining me today is Luis Oscar Ramirez, CEO and co-founder of Mawari, a company that is using blockchain technology for spatial computing. Welcome, Luis. Thank you. Very excited to be here. So for people unfamiliar with spatial computing and XR, what does this mean and why is there so much momentum right now? So we have seen all in the movies uh, holograms, we have seen AI like, you know, Terminator, uh, Ready Player One. We have a lot of movies where we reference uh, this technology. Standard reality is the spectrum between virtual reality and augmented reality, which means overlay of uh, virtual items in your environment. And special computing is all that makes that work uh, around you. Full disclosure, I am an investor in Mawari, so this is not investment advice. But what problem is Mawari trying to solve? Okay. So, uh, first of all, today we see um, content in these headsets, but as you see, they are very heavy, clunky, and it's not for everyday uh, use, right? But then we have these devices that are super slim for everyday use, but they have very limited processing power. So uh, we need a solution that sends and streams content to these glasses seamlessly at the same quality that you would see them there. So that's exactly the problem that we've been solving since, since 2017. Okay, and what does frameless mean? When we see media today, you see it on a TV, you see it on your smartphone, all movies are on 2D, right? So that's a frame media. Frameless media is when that media comes all the way to your eyes and all the environment is actually interacting with the real world in, in the media. That's what we call frameless media. So you don't use traditional streaming. What do you do instead? So with 2D, we stream video, right? And it's pixels. And, so it, and this has existed for more than 20 years. Right now, yeah, we have Netflix, we have YouTube, we have uh, Zoom, all video conferences. But for AR and 3D content, uh, we need a very different uh, way of streaming. If I were in a hologram and you're seeing me from a very specific angle, your own point of view, but another person would be seeing me in a very different point of view. So it's a very different rendering, right? So uh, streaming uh, 3D means you need to distribute the compute and the application uh, close to the end user. And streaming 2D was just distributing the content. So that's the main difference. Okay, and where does blockchain technology fit into that? Okay, so back in, in 2021, actually, we started gaining a lot of traction uh, here in the U.S. Our partners asked us, okay, can we stream uh, your service to 100,000 of users? Uh, we assumed that actually that was possible. Uh, but then we realized, okay, so having distributed compute across all cities is not um, a simple problem. It, has a, it is a business model and a scalability problem. And uh, we found out that actually just distributed a decentralized compute was the best way to tackle this problem. That's where blockchain uh, fits in. To distribute uh, servers across uh, all the cities, for example, in the U.S., would be a multi-billion, if not a trillion dollar investment for a, a small industry that is uh, today it does not justify. But if we do it in the blockchain way in which is a crowdsource and community-led infrastructure is much easier and faster to, to scale this infrastructure. So blockchain serves as the layer of transparency to align everyone into the same network. Okay, and how do you use AI or AI agents? As I mentioned, in the movies we have seen holograms, we have seen AI. So AI is right now we interact with ChatGPT by text. But in the future, we will interact with the AI by voice, by interacting like with real humans. So XR is the best user interface, the user experience for, for AI. So we understood that very early, and distributing compute not only for rendering, but for AI is what we do as a, a core business. Now, think about um, an AI agent, uh, a ChatGPT. If I had connected to me ChatGPT, you probably would like me more than it's just text, right? So this is what we're doing right now in Japan as a customer service agents that have a, a voice, and the, but they also have a body and a face. And it is more relatable and more personable than actually just uh, talking to a prompt interface. Right. Okay, so you mentioned customer service. What are the main use cases of Mawari? 
Okay, today in 2025, uh, we're mainly working on the entertainment sector, uh, virtual concerts uh, in Japan and in Korea. And you've seen now K-pop Demon Hunters is a huge hit right. worldwide. They are virtual artists, mm -hmm. actually. And the only way to meet them in the real world is through these or these headsets. So virtual concerts is one of our biggest use cases. And the other one is the creator economy. So from YouTube, now we have a trend that is called the virtual YouTubers. So these virtual YouTubers uh, go on YouTube, Twitch, or any other streaming platform, uh, but behind an avatar. The only way to actually interact with them in the real world is through augmented reality. Who else can participate uh, like for broad adoption for Mawari? Our network has two sides, the demand side and the supply side. So on the supply side, it is the, the blockchain infrastructure that, that we're building. And um, anybody can participate. Uh, we have our guardian nodes, but also we work with enterprise uh, data centers. In, in, in the US, we have a, as a partner T-Mobile. In Japan, we have a K, KDDI. And on the demand side, which is the content, actually we work with big IP companies. Uh, especially in Japan, uh, we're working with one of the biggest uh, names of uh, IP. And on, unfortunately, due to NDA, I cannot mention who we're talking to here in the US, but it's also a big uh, IP company. So think about um, when you see movies, IP movies, they have um, kids' movies that are animated with avatars. It's obviously now, um, very common like just K-pop demo hunters that kids want to interact with these avatars, right? So that's uh, the current demand today. So does decentralization give creators more control and new ways to earn in XR? Sure, I, I think so. And it's more actually on the infrastructure side. So as, as we mentioned, uh, anybody can join the network and run their Guardian node. So having actually contributing to, to the network, uh, you have actually more say into what the, this network builds versus just subscribing to a service in which you just pay the monthly fee and that's it. So right now you're targeting users that are outside the US. Is that because regulatory concerns? Our current go-to-market is, uh, is starting in, in Japan and in Korea. Uh, this is because the company was uh, founded there initially, but also because it's an early adopter market for uh, extended reality. So in, in Japan and in Korea, as, as I mentioned, we have animation and other type of IP that start from 3D and, and from the virtual, and it's very common for them now to accept this type of content. The U.S. and uh, the Western market uh, is still there, but it will take a little bit more time. So in a way, our strategy is to show success in, in Asia and then come uh, into the U.S. once the, the business model is proven. And so why should people care about this? What is the great potential of XR? In the near future, we will stop using smartphones and we will just have smart glasses. Everything will be interacting with these smart glasses. And we're building this infrastructure uh, very early. So think about uh, Akamai. Akamai is one of the biggest content delivery networks and infrastructure companies today. Uh, they actually thought about the idea in 1994, before even the internet uh, achieved the scale that we have today. So it's the same for us. Like we started in 2017 building this, knowing that at some point in the future, XR will be ubiquitous. And now we are very close to that future, actually. Luis, CEO and co-founder of Mawari, thank you so much for joining us. Likewise, uh, thank you for having me here. Very excited to be here and ready to show you Miyoko. Great. I'm at the New York Stock Exchange. Hi, Miyoko. Welcome to the New York Stock Exchange. Hi, Nisa. It's a pleasure to be here. I think this might be the first time we've ever had an avatar at the exchange. Well, that's super exciting. We can't wait to learn more about Mawari and have the rest of the world see you. Well, check this out. You can see me everywhere around the world all at once. That's amazing. That's the power of Mawari. Thanks to Mawari, I can really connect with people from everywhere. Well, I'm sure people from everywhere will look forward to interacting with you as well.
Thank you. And it's a real honor to be amongst one of the most influential women in Web3. Well, thank you so much, Miyoko. Look forward to seeing you again soon. And that's it for today's edition of the Business of Blockchain. I'm Nisa Amoyles from the New York Stock Exchange.